Let me out your head But baby, I'ma leave you on red Baby, I'ma leave you on red Hello and welcome to Here for the Chaos, episode 10. We're in the double digits, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We are almost at 300 subscribers, thank you. I'm coming at you again, barefaced, because depression. I barely have the energy to get up. You know, we're lucky I showered, freshly showered, thank you very much, because I got depression, depression. Depression. Okay, so that's basically that on that. And do I have a pimple? Yes, I have several actually. Watch your mouth about my pimples. And now that I'm barefaced, watch this be the only video that stays in focus the whole time. Swear. But yeah, I'm not feeling my best and we're moving. So it's just a crazy time, but you know I had to pop on here and talk to you about men not being shit. Men in Hollywood really cannot get themselves together. So today we're going to be talking about Joe Jonas and Russell Brand. Can I just say real quick, I thought it was Brandt with a T. Not sure why that's relevant, but just thought you should know that little nugget of information. You're welcome. First, we're going to start with Joe Jonas who is being sued. Sophie Turner sues Joe Jonas to return their two kids to England. Oh, I'm sorry, to England. Sophie Turner is suing estranged husband Joe Jonas to allow their two daughters to go with her to England after he refused to give her the child's passports. Boy, you ain't even told us what's on that camera. And now you're over here snatching passports, uh, Joseph. I'm so bored with these games. <sighs> According to a Manhattan court document filed Thursday, the wrongful retention of the kids in New York City comes a little more than two weeks after Jonas, a 34-year-old musician with the Jonas Brothers. Oh, we know. So we made dinner plans. <sighs> you gotta be, be good to me. I'm gonna be, be good to you, baby. So... After 34-year-old musician with the Jonas Brothers filed for divorce from Turner, a 27-year-old actress known for Game of Thrones. I've never seen Game of Thrones, by the way, so let me know if I need to watch it. I just don't like on a violence, you know? Like, I wish we could just hug. But the dragons seem cool. Game of Thrones, who said in the petition that she only learned of the divorce filing through media reports. See, now that's the part of celebrity life that got me fucked up. I better not find out you broke up with me through a tabloid. You better tell me. The children were to be returned home to England on September 20th, 2023, the filing said. The father has prevented the children's return to England, which is a breach of the mother's rights of custody under English law, England being the children's habitual residence. According to the document Turner filed in the Southern District of New York, she and Jonas had agreed before the family started traveling that the children would go with their father and a nanny while he toured with the Jonas Brothers in August. Turner said she was supposed to pick the girls up Wednesday after finishing a very intense filming schedule and return with them to England. The same document outlines relationship troubles that apparently disrupted those plans. When Turner and Jonas met Sunday to discuss their separation, Jonas said he wasn't going to return the kids' passports to Turner, the audacity. The petition said, and on Tuesday, Jonas's Florida attorney confirmed the passports would not be handed over. Okay, and as I said, everything goes down in Florida. Sophie girl, I know that you're from England, so you may not know, but you gotta stay away from the Floridians, okay? They just, they're on their own wavelength. Joe's impression of the meeting was that they had reached an understanding that they would work together towards an amicable co-parenting setup. I don't think an amicable co-parenting setup starts with you just stealing the kids basically or their passports at least and restricting them. That doesn't sound very amicable. Oh, my drink spilled. Hey, my carpet, I'm moving out, so <laughs> take that rental company that sucks. Joe's impression of the meeting was that they had reached an understanding that they would work together towards an amicable co-parenting setup, a representative for Jonas said in a statement. Joe is seeking shared parenting with the kids so that they are raised by both their mother and father, and is of course also okay with the kids being raised both in the U.S. and the U.K. The children were born in the U.S., and they have spent the vast majority of their lives in the U.S., yeah, that's basically it. This article also says Jonas filed for a divorce from Turner in Miami on the grounds that their marriage was irretrievably broken. But we still haven't seen the ring camera video though. What was she doing? Was she scratching her ass? What was she doing? Joseph, you need to give us a little song. I need to know what we're going off of. Right now, you look not so good. 
So that's a little Joe Jonas update. Now we're going to get into Russell Brand. So trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. Okay, this is the trigger warning of all trigger warnings here because this one is a lot and I'm going to be using the aid of TikTok to help me because this is just a lot. Okay, there's a lot happening. You know, it's just the same situation as Danny Masterson, all the mother Hollywood nasties. Before I put the first TikTok, I just wanted to give a little brief summary. So Russell Brand is being accused of R word, S A, and emotional. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to give you some ASMR of the back of my throat there, but I can't say that word. YouTube doesn't like it. So four women are alleging SA between 2006 and 2013. One woman alleges that Brand R worded her without a dumb against the wall in his Los Angeles home. She says Brand tried to stop her leaving until she told him she was going to the bathroom, at which point she got in her car and left. She was treated at a R crisis center on the same day, which the Times says it has confirmed via medical records. A second woman in the UK alleges that Brand S aid her when he was in his early 30s and she was 16 and still at school. Now, this is the crazy one. This victim, they're calling her Alice. That's not her real name. This one is so gross. She had never had a boyfriend before. He would have his driver go to get her. It was to a point where she was literally telling the teachers not to allow the driver to get her. This victim has actually spoken out. I'm going to try to see if I can get the video in if it hasn't already been scrubbed, but you know the internet and how they do. They're going to re-upload some stuff. She alleges he referred to her as the child fucking gross during an emotionally abusive and controlling relationship looking back she says he engaged in the behaviors of a groomer a third woman claims that brand s aid her while she worked with him in los angeles she alleges she repeatedly told brand to get off her and when he eventually relented he flipped and was super angry she says he threatened to take legal action if she told anyone else about her allegation and there's just all kinds of proof we'll get into it the fourth woman has allegedly been s aid by brand in the uk and him being physically and emotionally of tour. There's also one more allegation that just came out and he's also made a statement today. And, you know, Katy Perry, because they were married, if you didn't know, also spoke up about this. There may be some tea she knows on it because she says she didn't want to talk about what she knows about him because she saves it for a rainy day. And to that I say, if you are a big enough figure like Katy Perry and you could stop people from getting essayed, I don't think you should lock it away for a rainy day. I think you should probably just tell people. Apparently, Katy Perry referred to him as Rasputin, the infamous Russian mystic and holy man known for his influence over the T-Star, the SARS, the SARS, and his storied SUL exploits. So there's that. Now we're going to get into this TikTok because I really need some help with this one. I don't want to get any misinformation and this girl explains it way better than I could. So let's just do that. Oh, and I also saw a TikTok that was addressing it that was so stupid and it was kind of popping off. So I'm going to insert that too because I was like, what? I don't even know where to begin on this, you guys, but Russell Brand is being accused by two mainstream media outlets of four women. Apparently, they reached out to Russell last night to let him know they were going to run these stories, so he got ahead of it, made a video, and posted it to his Instagram yesterday. If you're unclear who Russell Brand is, at one point, he was a very well-known comedian, and he starred in a lot of movies. He was also- He's always giving me creepy vibes, too. Dirty pirate scallywag vibes. Also married to Katy Perry. They were together for about 14 months, from 09 to 2011. Now, before we get into what Russell Brand had to say, let's take a look at what was written. According to the Sunday Times, in 2019, they were made aware of serious allegations being made against Russell Brand relating to his treatment of women. They claim that within the world of comedy, there had been allegations circling for a number of years. Now they say over- the Apparently, there was a group chat between a bunch of the women in the space that had been warning other women about him for years. There was a man who spoke up about it, and he's actually been one of the few to speak up about Russell Brand. Daniel Sloss is another comedian, and he's one of the only comedians out here that will actually use his name and share what he's seen Russell do. Why is Daniel Sloss the only one who's called out Russell Brand? Daniel Sloss claimed that female comedians had a WhatsApp group warning each other of people they had uncomfortable experiences with, which included Russell Brand. Daniel went on to say, I know for many, many years that women have been warning each other ab ab about Russell. In reaction to Daniel speaking out, people online have been praising him for refusing anonymity to call out Russell Brand publicly. One creator even said, He did it because it was the right thing to do and to be part of the solution. 
Daniel not only called out one of the biggest names in the entertainment industry, but he also stood up for women in general, not just telling them to speak out on their experiences, but to do so knowing that men should be holding their peers accountable. Just at the very least for the naysayers, because you know there are some, there's actually a ridiculous amount. We're going to talk about it later. People been peeping his peep. <laughs> People have been aware of his nasty, gross behavior for a while now, but you know when you're in Hollywood or at any job in general, if someone is in a place of power, not a lot of people want to go against that person because they don't want to lose their job, okay? So we'll get to you naysayers, but... Say over the course of their investigation, a team of journalists contacted hundreds of people. These included friends and family of alleged victims, comedians, executives in the TV industry, and people who worked alongside and for Russell Brand. They did change the names of the girls, but they said that at the start of 2021, the Sunday Times was contacted by Alice, who had become aware of our investigation. She alleges Brand was and emotionally abusive towards her in 06 when she was 16 and he was 30. And earlier this year, another girl named- And again, that is so gross to me because like I said, I'm in my 20s and if a 19 year old came up to me, which is a legal consensual age gap, I would be like, ew, I don't wanna talk to you. I just don't. I just think that is so weird. Like I have no intentions on even talking to a 19 year old, let alone a 16 year old when I'm in my 30s. That's gross, Russell. Nadia spoke to the Times and she alleges that she was by brand in LA in July of 2012. Our journalists went through a wealth of evidence provided by Nadia, which corroborated her claims. These included therapy notes from a treatment center, text messages, details of call records, photographs, and a version of a letter she says she sent to brand about the impact of the alleged on her life. A short time later, the Times spoke to Phoebe, who claims she was S-Aid in 2013 while she was working at Brand's home. All the women's claims required corroboration, which took many hours of work. Their form of investigation was rereading his memoir, watching and listening to hundreds of hours of recordings of his old comedy sets, radio shows, and TV appearances. Again, Russell Brand knew this piece was coming out today, so he posted a video yesterday. And I'm gonna post a little bit of his comedy, cause he was groping all kinds of reporters way, 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 way too much. <laughs> Look how sensitive and vulnerable he is. He, he must be gay. gay. That's right. That means women feel safe around me. Uh -huh. They trust me. Then bang, pregnant, bang, pregnant, bang, pregnant. First of all, that you would play into the fact that you are gay just to make women feel safe around you and then exploit that. You're fucking gross. Let's watch the rest of the compilation. For the queen, you can't. Do don't say for, for the queen. For the queen! No, I don't say that, please. Oh, love, be Russell careful because that's a low-cut dress. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm only wow. flesh and blood. I've got instincts. Oh. Okay, see, this is what I mean for the people that are like, he didn't do it. It's on camera. She's clearly uncomfortable. It's entirely possible that he could have a smear campaign going on about him for the things that he's revealed and outed. But it's also possible that two things are true at once and he's also a bad person on top of it. <laughs> when you laugh like that, it makes me know what you'd sound like when you pop yourself down on my knee and see if we can't get you pregnant. <laughs> And then he tried to kiss her. Oh, wow. Okay. Everything's okay. Yes, isn't it? yes. Very that in itself is S.A., okay? These reporters are not there for this. They're there to do their job, their job, their J-O-B. They're on the clock, they're at work. They're not gonna just start fucking you on camera. So even then, that is S.A. If you were interested in someone and y'all are both on the clock, it's fine to slip them a letter and be like, Zion, the way you reported on them reportings was nice. Let me take you out to dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to really get into the character of Russell Brand. A lot the way you report and it's really nice. Let me take you out to dinner at the pub. We should go out to dinner together and then we should kiss. If we're of a consensual age, we'd love to kiss ya. Okay, so, you know, do it like that. Because you took your eye off the road because things was getting a bit fruity out there. All right, Liz, <laughs> we goodbye. Were, yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a wonderful experience. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> All right, take care. <laughs> Russell, how can I do your bra just like this? No. What do you think that gesture means the way you're touching that bowl? What does that indicate? <laughs> what is that? What's the subtext of that? You're a sex addict, is that right? I don't know if it's right, but it's fun. I wouldn't call it fun. People are like, he's innocent. Like, how are you going to say that when he gropes someone on camera? There are literal videos of him touching reporters inappropriately. And they're clearly like, oh, what are you doing? So I don't think there's consent there. And it's on camera.
you freaks. Today, completely denying it. If you don't know this about Russell Brand, he quit Hollywood in 2014 because he wanted to get away from that environment. Or because he knew that this was gonna come out eventually and he would be escorted out. He's been working on himself, he's been doing meditation, and he uses his platform to call out corruption in the media, specifically in the news. Okay, so now this is where I'm gonna get into a little bit of the people that are naysaying because a lot of people are saying that this is something that was calculated by these news stations because Russell Russell Brand was exposing corruption. They're saying they're framing him to get him to keep his mouth shut effectively. Which according to Russell is the reason why he believes he's being targeted. Here's what he had to say. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. I don't like how much he talks with his hands. And against this litigation is something that I absolutely, 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 absolutely refuse. I would refuse to believe that I would do something like that. And if you're not watching video, then you missed the whole show. That's on you. But he seems like, on a serious note, super animated for what's happening. It's a little strange because if it were me, I would be very somber. Honestly, I don't even know what I would say. But I know that my tone would not be like, oh, and I'm going down to the end and we're going to go down to the pub and get a beer. Like, I don't know. It wouldn't be that allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. But if you are extremely promiscuous, just like Crystal Lee was saying, who had a self-admitted sex addiction as well, if you're in that space of, you know, fucking and sucking 24-7, could it be that you're so jaded by this lifestyle because you're getting so much sex? that maybe because you're used to groupies just kind of handing it to you, you get in a headspace of everybody's gonna hand it to me because it's already been handed to me. So there's no way anyone would say no. And then in that headspace, you get real bold with it and start getting inappropriate because that's what it looked like to me. Like I said, there's literally videos of him being super weird with reporters and them being very noticeably uncomfortable. I was always transparent about that then almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasize. You being transparent about having a sex addiction and coming up to a girl and being like, I'm addicted to sex, doesn't mean that you can't also take advantage of that girl. Just cause you told her doesn't mean that it was consensual all the time. And here's another misconception. People think that just because you've had sex with someone one time, that's consent for every single time in the future. Maybe sometimes you just don't wanna. That's how you can get R-worded in relationships. Just because you were a little too transparent about you slinging that D everywhere doesn't mean that everyone was prepared for how aggressive you seem like you were. ...into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles, Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist, Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. No, and I think you're trying to control these spaces because these publications reached out to you ahead of time and told you they were dropping it. So you and your team probably scrambled and were like, oh no, 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 this is gonna be really bad. So we have to spin it and make it look like smear campaign. Anybody want a smear campaign? because that's what they always do. Every time something bad comes out about a celebrity, they're like, mmm, smells like a smear campaign. Or you're just a piece of shit. He does say he doesn't mind if they wanna use his comedy show or his book to talk about his promiscuous but consensual life in the past, which I do have his book. I read like maybe a few chapters and I never finished it when I first got it. But he says what he does deny is the fact that there are very serious and criminal allegations being made against him. And then he also says, this. Of mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Okay, then where is it? Drop it then, boy. Don't do another Joe Jonas ring camera. Drop them receipts. Drop them right into my Google Drive just to me 
no one else, so I can get the exclusive scoop. Thanks, Russell. While Russell Brand is being investigated by these two media outlets, he has not been investigated by police, but this is clearly a developing story and I will keep you guys updated. Okay, so that's the first part. Lots to take in, but it gets a lot grosser. We're just gonna skip to the next part. I didn't realize this article had already been released. It's very detailed and very long, and there are a lot of allegations in here from the four women against Russell Brand. This video, we're gonna talk about the woman they're calling Alice and what she had to say. Before we get into Alice's story, the article talks about Russell Brand and how he had a addiction and gave that up in 2002, which he's been very open about. Once giving up that addiction, he then became addicted to even admitting that he would sleep with 80 women in one month, but then went to a clinic to receive treatment. That happened in 2000. And See, and that kind of ties back into Danny Masterson because like the ones that stay sober in Hollywood, good for them, but also it makes me think that you have another vice and usually the sober people in Hollywood are also coincidentally sex addicts. I'm not saying that's every sober person in Hollywood, obviously, but I'm just saying that there does seem to be a pattern of all these men getting this defense from other people people like, well, they're drug free. They don't even do drugs. So they have to be a good person. Nope. 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 Five. And then he met Alice in 2006. At the time he was becoming a household name and he was the host of Channel 4's Big Brothers, Big Mouth and a BBC radio presenter. She was 16. Russell Brand was 31. And while the age of consent in the UK is 16, she had never had a boyfriend and was recovering from an eating disorder. According to Alice, she was shopping one day at Top Shop and he had been working at a nearby studio. She recognized him from TV and had previously seen him do stand up. He decided to approach her. He said he took her shopping bags from her, which caught her off guard and went through everything, pulled out a dress and said, this is what you're going to wear on your date with me this week. Asked oh, uh, negative yeah. Rizzler. That just strikes me so much as someone that thinks that their life is like a movie. Like, first of all, don't touch my shopping bags. I need those H&M pants. But second of all, you're gonna go through my shopping bags, pull out something like your Prince Charming, and be like, this is what you're gonna wear on all date tonight, love. Like, no, I don't think so. I think you're gonna go ahead and put my Forever 21 dress back and I think you're gonna fuck off. Throughout to dinner, she told her mom and her mom made her text him her age thinking that would maybe throw him off, but it didn't. Alice's mother was very upset, but did not feel she could control who her daughter met. Uh, yes you can. Uh, yes you can. Whoa there, mama. Yes you can. If your kid is a minor and living under your roof, you don't just go, nah. Well, they do have a date with someone in their 30s and she is only 16, but I can't control her. What kind of what? First of all, when I have a kid, my 16 year old is not going out to meet a 30 year old man. I will block the damn door. You are not going to sit here and meet a th no, no, no. He claimed that on their first date, he had asked her immediately when they met if she was 16. And he said to her, I don't give a F if you're 12. I need to know where I stand legally. Legally, that wouldn't help you. I mean, I guess it would because the age of consent over there is 16, but that's fucking gross that you were like, I don't care if you're in kindergarten. Like, uh, you should. He says in the very beginning of their relationship, she felt like he was charming and attentive and it made her feel giddy and special. The first time they did it, she told him that she was a virgin and he was like, oh my God, my baby, my baby, and picked me up and cradled me in his arms like a child and was stroking my hair. He's like, you're like my little dolly. He would refer to her as the child and would- That's so gross and disturbed. That one really caught me off guard the first time I heard these allegations through the Sloan video because that is- is fucking gross. Coach her on what to say to her parents whenever he wanted to meet with her. He would give her scripts on how to lie to her parents and tell her not to trust her friends because if they knew who she was seeing, they would find ways to make money off of it and said it was very isolating. Now looking back, she realizes he was grooming her and said that he told her never to send him any of those kind of images and she believed this was because of her age. Alice then accuses him of being controlling, saying that even one time when they were having, he would remove the without her knowing. No, 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 no. That's a huge no. And imagine too, what if she got pregnant? You're telling me you're worried about her sending images to your phone so you don't have CP on your phone, but what would be the assumption if she got pregnant? You would just pay her off to act like you're not the daddy? Like she wouldn't come out about you and say that one day? Nasty ass. Ship, that's when he S8 her. She was leaning against his headrest and he forced his 
stuff in her mouth. She said it was choking me, I couldn't breathe, and I was pushing him away and he wasn't backing off at all. I had to punch him really hard in the stomach to get him off. I was crying and he said, oh, I only wanted to see your mascara run anyway. What? I'm really gonna try not to get mad, okay? Because talking about these men, these dirty, disgusting, Losers back to back to back. It definitely is taking its toll. I, like I said, I'm a multiple essay victim myself. This is gross. You're gross. She said as she laid on the bed, he got on top of her, opened her mouth, and started drooling in it. She was ew. <laughs> Here's the thing, and obviously that's gross and not the worst part of the story. Here's what makes me mad is when anyone who is an essay or a user, whatever kind of terrible person, just treats people like they are just a plaything, just a doll that you can do whatever you want to and manipulate however you want and you can just do whatever you want. First of all, drooling in even in a consensual person's mouth is disgusting. But when there's a child that is telling you to get away from them, when you're in a position with them, you shouldn't have been in in the first place because they're a child and they feel so unsafe that they punch you and then you open their mouth and drool in it. The disrespect, that is a human being. It is a child, you fucking gross bitch. And I hope when y'all go to prison, even though it may be a fancy prison for celebrities, I hope y'all become someone else's bitch and they do all the things that you did to these kids to you. I'm to fight him off, but he's laying on top of me, so I can't. My limbs are trapped underneath him and I just thought, why are you doing this? And then he held my mouth shut and made me swallow it and I just started gagging and crying. She said the relationship ended when he invited her over one day and she arrived to find another woman in his bed. I was so angry and I said to him, why would you do this to me? This is so humiliating. I would love to hear if the other woman will come out. He thinks, I think he was very skillful in the start of making his identity be, I'm a womanizer, I'm a sex addict, I'm inappropriate, but it's all just a joke. It's funny. It's a smoke screen for a lot more of his dark behavior. That is exactly what I said in the last video about Ashton Kutcher with Thorne. We need to be mindful that there could be an overcompensation happening for gross behavior. But also there are a lot of people like this, uh, Tana Mojo comes to mind first, where they have this rhetoric going of, I'm just a mess, I'm just like, you know, I have all these issues, blah, 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 so that way you you don't question them and they can get away with whatever they want basically it's gross it's nasty we're over it and there's actually a voice note from that victim so we're gonna listen to it so a bbc chauffeur driven car picked you up at the age of 16 to take you to russell brown's house yes yeah the bbc um has said in a statement the documentary just referring to that dispatches program and the associated reports contained serious allegations spanning a number of years what would you like from the bbc I'd like to know why more wasn't done at the time to keep, I mean, he already had a, he had a very well known record of doing things that were inappropriate on the air, having inappropriate conversations. He was, he was not being held. I don't think he was being held to the same standards that other presenters or other, certainly not news readers would behave like this. You know, anybody else that was working with the BBC, there was exceptions and allowances made for him. And we need to ask ourselves why. Another thing I learned from watching the Sloan video, shout out, hey, his team knew about it and they were just like, it's fine. Just don't be out with her in public. Like y'all are all nasty. So obviously this one is the most disturbing because this is the allegation that involves a minor, which takes us to a whole other level. Essay is already horrendous and disgusting and despicable. When you subject a child to it, it is a whole other level. So now we're going to move on to the last two videos from this creator explaining what we know about the situation. Shout out to TikTok because I'm not a very good paraphraser. I'll be like, yeah, and that person did the thing and then they did it. And then, you know, this other person came and they did that thing too. And then everybody else was like, oh no, don't do that thing. And I, I don't know, you know, so thank God. <laughs> I myself used to think it was really great how open he was because a lot of people could probably relate to his struggles. But now let's get into the story of the second woman who they call Nadia. Russell Brand moves to LA and stays there even after going through a divorce with Katy Perry. Nadia, who was a businesswoman, said that she had met him at a party in her 30s. They exchanged numbers and they would text. They met up in June of 2012 in his LA home and went to have consensual but was unsettled by his glazed over look. He does this thing when he glazes over. I don't know what's going on in his head. It was fine, but it was a weird first time experience with someone when you're having, 
with them for the first time. Afterwards, they were texting and one time he suggested that she bring a friend. They met again at his house on July 1st after he had pleaded for her to come over. When she walked in, the door was already unlocked and he comes running out of his bedroom unclothed. He says he put her against the wall, started kissing her and made a comment saying, I'll keep you safe. Then tells her that a friend was already in the room and he wanted her to join them according to Nadia. She tells him no, slips away, runs to another wall that had a painting and said her bag was on her shoulder and also stuck underneath the painting. I'm stuck underneath the painting and he's pushing up against me. He's a lot taller than me and he has that glazed look in his eyes again and I can't move and I told him, get off, get off. She claims he pushed her against the wall, her, and didn't wear a... After he finished, she pushed him away and then says he blocks the door that I've come into because he doesn't want me going. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, no. I'm of course she's not okay. I'm not okay. You need to get away from me. And he's like, let's calm down. Let's calm down after you just R-worded somebody, you freak. Nadia says that Bran eventually stepped away from the door that he had been blocking after Nadia told him she wanted to use the bathroom. Bran jumped in her car and says she booked it out of there. At 3.29, he sends her a text saying, I'm sorry, that was crazy. The text was also supplied and is part of this article and naysayers. I was crazy and selfish. I hope you can forgive me. I know that you're a lovely person. She responds with, you scared the sh out of me. You're right. I, I am a lovely person. And for you to take advantage of me like that is unacceptable. You have a problem. You need help. It's dangerous that you think you can get your own way all the time. That's what I said. I said that because he was promiscuous and had a lot of people that said yes to him, he probably got to a point where he was like, well, there's no one that would say no because no one ever does. I have all the time so he probably was like she's just playing around she's just joking she wants it that is a problem that is dangerous do you know how scary you are when that glazed look comes over you when a girl says no it means no do i have to go and get myself tested last time you asked me or no when i say no that doesn't mean it's optional I don't have the best reputation i prime myself on being safe and trying to make the right decisions obviously this was a bad one i'm so disappointed. He responds with, I'm very sorry, you don't need to get tested. I will make this up to you somehow with live in kindness. Not my original idea, which was more, you've been lovely to me and I'm embarrassed by my behavior. Sorry. She doesn't respond and he said, will you ever forgive me? Nadia, meanwhile, had told a close friend what had happened and she took her to a treatment center at UCLA Santa Monica Medical Center that same day. She has shared a full copy of her treatment records, which state that she provided her underwear and other samples of evidence, which were frozen. Officer from LAPD was alerted by the center, according to the notes, but she chose not to make a police report. She said, I didn't think my words would mean anything up against his. The notes also state that she was worried if her assailant's name is somehow released, then her name will be dragged through the dirt. She then had therapy at the clinic for the next five months, and during her session, records show that Nadia was contemplating criminal or civil proceedings before ultimately deciding against it. However, she wrote him a letter saying she was hoping to regain some of her power in the process and her note said that she says she sent it to his house. In the letter she asked, do you know what you put me through, my body through? You scared the sh out of me on July 1st. I thought in any situation I would be strong enough to fight someone off. You completely broke me down. That is a lot of my experience too. I'm actually going to get into self-defense classes because that's how I feel too. I'm a pretty small person. It's not that hard to grab me or whatever. And, and there are people that unfortunately that will test that and do that. She was pulling out the dates. She pulled out the evidence. It's extremely unfortunate and jarring to hear what these women have gone through. And I'm just ready for it to stop. What do y'all need? Y'all need those little rubber, like, you know, in S shops, they have like the little separate butts and it's just a butt and you fuck that. Why don't you do that? If if you're really at a place where you're like, I need it. There are ways for you to get it without assaulting people and hurting people. Where one person says no, another would say yes. So why don't you just go find the one that would say yes and stop trying to force the ones that say no. Again, it's like, I can't imagine trying to be intimate with someone that doesn't want to be intimate with me. One that's weird and awkward and embarrassing. And that's just if someone's just kind of like not feeling me, I would feel weird. But if someone's full on punching me and getting physical with me because they feel like they're in danger, how do you put 
push through that and still try to be intimate with somebody. It just doesn't compute. It doesn't make sense. Go fuck a cantaloupe. I heard if you throw one of those in the microwave for 30 seconds, it's basically the same thing. So do that. So now we're gonna go on to the last video before his statement today. And then we're also gonna watch this one girl that had a lot to say in the press the other day and probably should have just kept that TikTok in the drafts. Now we're gonna be talking about his third accuser who they call Phoebe. Phoebe was in her 20s when she says she first met Russell Brand at an AA meeting. That was before she started working with him. They also had a brief relationship with him, which ended by the time of the alleged attack in early 2013. Phoebe was working with a team on a project for Russell Brand and says that they worked from different locations, including his property in West Hollywood. He was at his house when she realized that a member of his staff had gone out and they were alone. She said she remembered being trapped in a bedroom and realizing that he wanted to have with her. He can't remember if he was already naked or wearing underwear, but at some point he was fully unclothed and chasing her. He said he grabbed her, pinned her on the bed, tried to kiss her and remove her clothes, and then says, I saw something come over his eyes. I swear to God, like black, his eyes had no more color. They were black, like the devil. You know who else had that? Apparently, Ted Bundy. Double. And then says it was like a different person entered his body. I was screaming and I was like, what are you doing? Stop, please, you're my friend. I love you, please don't. That part is so heartbreaking to me saying like, I'm your friend, please. Like she's pleading with this person. She's pleading with him. And you still push through to get a nut? Whack yourself off if you have to. Like what? Please don't do this. I don't want to do this. I think he had his hand down my trousers, but I was fighting so hard and I was screaming so hard, hoping that I could get through somehow. I don't know what the actual definition of SA is, but it feels like that. He didn't me. I kept begging for him to get off of her and eventually he relented, at which point she says he flipped and was super angry. He then started shouting at her, F you, you're fired, and she fled his home in tears. He says as she left, she passed by a group of people that had arrived to his home to have a meeting about the project. Years later, she met one of the people who had been in this group and says, he pulled me aside and said to me, I have never forgiven myself for not running inside to save you. I heard you screaming and I didn't know what to do and we were all so scared of him and I didn't do anything. I don't care how scared of someone I am. It's like the Ashton Kutcher thing where he went to see his ex-girlfriend and she had been unalived in a violent way by a serial killer and he saw the blood and he just left. I don't comprehend that because instinctually, my body's gonna be running before I even know what I'm doing. If I hear someone screaming, I'm there. I don't care how scared I am. And maybe that's like not a great thing to do that I would just run into a situation ill-prepared, but that's just how my reaction would work. I wouldn't sit there and hear someone screaming and hear someone need help and just be like, ooh, well, I guess I'll give it five and then I'll come back. Like, what? And even if you don't wanna get involved, I'm sure you could have called the cops and done it anonymously, you can say that you are someone on the street if you really are that scared of him and your job. But I know one thing, there is no job in this world where I would hear someone being SA'd and just be like, none of my business. Anything, and I am sorry. The Times attempted to contact this person, but he did not respond. Phoebe, who told friends what had happened to her, felt forced to return to work in the days afterwards, but claims that Russell Brand, after being aware of her allegation, courted her and threatened her with legal action. And she didn't report the incident because she feared that her career would be affected. Three separate sources confirmed that she had told them about her allegations at the time, while two more were also aware of it. And then Russell Brand eventually moves back to the UK and there was a serious allegation being made about him and it became public, but this is the first time I actually heard about this. In 2014, an ex of his wrote a book called K Not Entanglement with a Celebrity. That ex is Jordan Martin. In the book, she renamed him as Randall Grant and herself as Dina. She declined to be interviewed for this investigation due to personal family circumstances, but has confirmed that she stands by her account in the book and says that it is an accurate depiction of their relationship and he never challenged her on its content. They had a six month relationship that began in February 07 and they lived together. In the book, she described him as SAing her and Bran being physically and emotionally abused towards her. The alleged assault occurred at the Lowry Hotel in Manchester and she described that he became angry when he found out she had spoken to an ex, snatching a phone from her, ripping the case apart and pulling out the battery. He then described in the book how she walked away from him and stood by a sink and then he came up behind her and does not say a word. He stands so close to her and slides his hand down the front of her low hanging jeans. Then you can just 
finish that sentence. She said she was not ready for the intrusion. And after that, Brand allegedly walked out of the room silently, leaving her feeling confused, uncomfortable, and a little stunned. She also describes how he once forced her to brush her teeth so hard that her gums bled so she would taste anonymous to him. What? What does that even mean? I will never understand the mind of an abuse. What does that even mean? And I could so see it. Like, it kind of reminds me of like MGK, not saying they're the same, but MGK is a little weird to me too. I feel like they think they're in this rock star lifestyle. They get in this headspace where they're just above everyone, like godlike. And trust and believe some celebrities think they're gods. And they're like, rock and roll, bleed for me. You know, like they see it as a commitment to them. I'm not really sure, but I can't imagine telling someone that they need to do something that would harm themselves for me to taste anonymous? What does that even mean? Martin writes that Brand pushes boundaries, controlling other people to fulfill personal perversions for the sake of dominance or for the sake of something. There's that dominance again. He went on to say that his attitude towards women became an open secret in radio and TV production, according to sources. Like I said in my first video, this is a developing story, so I'm sure we'll hear a lot more updates. Oh, I'm sure we will too. So now let's go to his statement. Hello there, you awakening wonders. Obviously it's been... An extraordinary and I don't think you should start it as like a TED talk. The hello my awakening wonders is something that he says a lot and I think when you're addressing this you really shouldn't start it like that. Distressing week and I thank you very much. Oh a distressing week for you boohoo. Thank you very much for your support and for questioning the information that you've been presented with. As you set them up to do. By now you're probably aware that the British government have asked big tech platforms to censor our online content and that some online platforms have complied with that request. What you may not know is that this happens in the context of the Online Safety Bill, which is a piece of UK legislation that grants sweeping surveillance. He's one of those people that everyone is like, he's using big words, he's talking slowly, he's not yelling, he's not upset, he seems like a sensible guy, he's all calm. But what he's really doing is just giving you so much information at one time that it's hard to parse through. And he's being so vague and redirecting the attention to other places that you don't know where to focus on. So why are you telling me about this censorship bill when you should be going into the allegations? Censorship powers and it's a law that has already been passed. I also don't imagine you've heard of the Trusted News Initiative. Now, as is often the case when a word like trusted is used as part of an acronym to describe an unelected body, trust is the last thing you should be offering. You're one to talk. The Trusted News Initiative is a collaboration between big tech and legacy media organizations to target, control, choke and shut down independent media organizations like this one. We'll be talking about that on our show on Monday on Rumble. Oh, get that free promo in, boy. But just to give you an idea of what the TNI is, this is a quote from one of their spokespeople. Because the actual real rivalry now is not between the BBC and CNN globally, it's actually between all trusted news providers and digital platforms. It's clear that these organizations collaborate in constructing narratives, whether that's around the war or the pandemic. And of course, there are other examples. And it's very clear to me that we have to be very, very cautious indeed. That's why I'm asking you to follow me on Rumble. Oh, <laughs> Rumble. <laughs> Rumble is the number one place where all the pieces of shit go. Andrew Tate, Sneeko. Oh man, you just sealed your fate by saying Rumble. So obviously we're gonna find out more and this is developing, but oh. <sighs> Rumble was not a good direction for me personally, because that's where everyone that sucks ass goes. Rumble have made a clear commitment to free speech, and Rumble is the primary platform that we will be streaming from. We'll be back this Monday, and as usual, we'll be talking about deep state and corporate collusion, and how ordinary democracy is anathema now, how it's shut down, ignored, and avoided. We'll be talking about a military industrial complex that is able to facilitate and start wars that seem sometimes to be little more than money laundering operations. And that's with all respect to the 
hundreds of thousands of victims of the numerous ongoing wars. What about your victims? This is the thing. I think he's actually very good at being manipulative, believe it or not. I could see how people would be like, oh man, this guy's using his platform to call attention to corruption and all these issues that we need to take care of. He couldn't be a bad guy, but he can though. In the world at the moment. We'll be talking about the role of Big Pharma and how Big Pharma have been able to influence government policy around the world and how they've been able to evade due liability and necessary You're evading due liability scrutiny, how they've been able to avoid media investigation that perhaps ought be due them. And of course, we'll be talking about media corruption and censorship. So please follow me on Rumble because that's the only way that we can keep our voice. You can keep your voice, but you took other people's. B.rumble.com to support me directly and keep me and our channel. Uh oh, I saw that little eye wiggle. He's reading this from a teleprompter or reading cards or something. Oh man, this is so bad. This is such a bad way to follow up allegations like this. Independent. And I need your support now more than ever and more than I ever imagined I would. So follow me, support our channel if you can, if it's within your means. But more important than any of that is that you please, if you can, Stay free. Oh, I know you're trying to stay free. I can't do it. I can't. I can't with the acting like he's above it and using it as a way to platform himself on other areas. Please. I know I've been accused of horrible things, but I need your money. I know I've got more money than you, but I need your money as well so I can stay free. Like, boy, bye. Well, this is unlucky because I just checked the last recordings and the majority of what I've recorded for this video, and it is in fact blurry. I don't think we're all surprised. All right, so now we're going to listen to this girl talk about her opinion that nobody asked for i guess no one asked for mine either but at least mine's not on the wrong side of history this russell brand situation is so fakak what they are doing with him is the modern equivalent of when they used to hang people from trees in the town square and no it isn't and put a sign on them that says ye be warned except the warning is to anyone ye should be warned he's an r-wordist who wants to question the government big pharma happened in maui any cultural issues they're saying is everyone better get in line accept common narratives or this could happen to you they will literally ruin your life they should ruin his life his life should be ruined he ruined it for himself i'm old enough to remember when the justice system in the united states was innocent until proven guilty but gone are the days because who needs that when you have trial by media that's not true okay i don't appreciate how she's watering this down they were provided evidence text messages things that apparently took them hundreds of hours to go through we're not just going off of a hearsay off of oh this woman just said it so that's it there's evidence well documented evidence are on the fast track to an orwellian dystopia you don't need actual laws telling people what they could think or what they could say when you can take away their living and socially ostracize them. And Russell Brand is only the latest example of this. I've seen so many headlines saying how we have to get it right this time and convict him before there has even been a trial. Of course, the YouTube police have totally demonetized him. And listen, these cases are very complicated. I don't presume he's innocent. It really sounds like you do. I also don't presume he is guilty. He's done it on camera. Again, he reached for a reporter and tried to kiss her, talked about her boobs. Like, it's on camera, lady. There's already at least some essay going on in the workplace with this man. Even if, even if super devil's advocate, everyone else was just lying. Everyone else was just lying just to lie. There's instances on camera. Certainly seems suspicious that allegations are coming up 10 years later. And that's how it happened with Danny Masterson too. These all happened in 2003. Investigations take time, especially when there's multiple victims. It's not an overnight thing. On in the stage of his life when he is on drugs, being super promiscuous, which he has spoken about at length. No, it's it's now, now that he wants to question the leftist narrative. Yeah, because you didn't like his politics before, but he changed to you because he's grifting. Because being a conservative grifter makes more money. And you're saying, why are they doing it now when he's not in the public eye? He is. The only reason you know him is because he's questioning these media outlets and whatever. Coming soon on Rumble. And they're probably doing it now because people are listening now. Back then, when you would report these kind of things, nothing happened. That's why everyone's getting convicted now. Bill Cosby was years later. Danny Masterson, years later. Harvey Weinstein, years later. Because no one wants to talk. And now they finally do. And now that they do, there's so much to unpack. It's a whole investigation. It takes time. Let's take away his money from YouTube with over 6 million subscribers. We'll just show everyone else that that's what'll happen to them too. Girl, you better go on to whatever tennis match you're going to with whoever's husband you just stole and shut your fucking mouth. 
I'm not going to get political here, but a lot of conservative people can't really seem to understand that there are people that switch specifically just to grift and they don't actually believe your weird, stupid beliefs. They just want the money. And Rumble really sealed the deal for me because Rumble is genuinely where all the horrible people go to be horrible and say the N word and say slurs and whatever because free speech. That's basically all I have to say on Russell Brand. I think he's disgusting. Obviously, the story is ongoing, so we'll have to see what more comes out. But the way people are handling it, the amount of people that actually think this is all just from him exposing the media and trying to out corruption. Again, two things can be true. You can out corruption and still be a piece of shit. Before we wrap up, I have one more update on Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater because the two done moved in together, child. I was actually telling my boyfriend about this and he was like, oh, well, that's the least they could do if they're going to cheat and break up a family. The least they could do is not make it seem like a fling. But at this point, his wife, Lily J, just had their baby. Okay, so she probably is just like, girl, give me my man back so I have someone to help me raise this child so I can sleep and live my life. And that's just very sad. Like I said, I am an Aryanator. I was for a long, 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 long time since her first song ever dropped. I mean, I have looked up to this woman for a long time and I no longer do. I think you're despicable. I don't know what this turn in your life is. She'd been accused of cheating for a long time. We just never really took it seriously until she stole a newborn mother's husband. And Ethan Slater, if you think that you're going to end up with this woman you're fucking stupid and you have SpongeBob brain because either way, even if you do, you have a child. So you have to be in your ex-wife's life, you know? So that's probably not gonna work so well. I just think this is very short-sighted. I'm very disappointed in everybody. As always, disappointed in everybody. Editing me here with the world's most atrocious update to this story. Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater have been spotted together publicly. They went on a date night at Disney World amid ongoing divorces. This TMZ article says Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater are finally stepping out together. Finally. Uh, no. Step back in and end this whole thing because it's horrible. And chose the happiest place on earth to show face. Having an intimate date night at Disney World. She also went with her mom and brother, which I think adds another layer because you're on a family outing. First of all, if I was the family, I definitely would not be out supporting that. It's just like showing Lily, Ethan Slater's ex, that y'all are close, close enough to like blend families. And I'm just honestly flabbergasted by this because you really are doing this so much in public. Like what is wrong with you? And apparently they were showing PDA and all that as well. It just honestly makes me sick. Like I've said, I have loved Ariana Grande for a long time and it just is so despicable to me to think that you could not only meet someone's wife and Ethan Slater and his ex were together for a long time, like 10 years, I believe. I don't know how you could meet someone's wife and hold their baby and then steal their husband. And now I don't want to take all the blame off of Ethan Slater. He sucks. Obviously, he's not this helpless little being that can't say no to her. However, I think there's a power dynamic. She's Ariana Grande. You're obviously going to be stunned. Like you don't think you would find someone like her willing to even go for you. I also find it weird. He looks like her brother. I think that's a little strange, but I just think it's pretty despicable to not only steal someone's husband when they have a newborn with this person and have have thoughts that this person would be their life partner. I mean, they were together a long time, but then you do it in the most public way and y'all are living together and y'all are going out and, and just rubbing it in her face in these public places where obviously you're going to get photographed. I just think it's wrong. I just do. I'm like insanely disappointed. I really don't know how else to express it, but I am so disappointed in everyone for this situation. And I think that because of maybe her being a child star, she looks at other people people, specifically other women as competition. And she's just like, well, if you lose your man, oops, you lose, you know, be better, which is crazy. I think she needs to really reevaluate her life because I don't see this being a forever couple. She obviously gets bored after a while. And when you get bored, the destruction you're leaving behind is unforgivable. That's my update. That's what I feel. Comment down below what you think. Let me know your green screen recommendations. Thank you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as always. And I don't want to hear not one darn thing about this video being blurry. I'm serious, y'all. Okay, I'm moving. I'm stressed. I'm trying to get it together. But until I do, it's a podcast for your listening pleasure. But I'm still cute blurry, so I really don't want to hear it. Okay? So thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time. I you on red. Oh, yeah, I know you want me. You better get in line. 
I'm everybody's dream girl. See me when you lay your head down.